In this video, we'll create this stock portfolio dashboard where you can track how your investments are performing, both in terms of totals and individually comparing them to other stocks. And you can download the file in the description. So let's get into it. Firstly, in the transactions tab over here, we've got all of the different buy and sell orders that we've made so far with the different the quantity, the price, etc., all the relevant information. And suppose we bought some new shares in Apple. For that, we would just go ahead and right click. From there, you can go to insert and we want to insert a row below that. Say we, we bought it on the 18th. So we'll just go ahead and type that. And then here we just want to type Apple, press enter. That's going to auto populate for us. And let's say we bought 10 shares and the price for them. So the price that we paid at the time was 165.07. That's going to auto populate and we're just going to put USD here as well. In case you're wondering what these icons over here mean, if you click on them, you can start to see that the, sh the share information of that particular company starts to pop up and it's quite a long description there. So if you want to use that format, say for something else, say I put Walmart over here, hit enter. From there, you have to go to data and then you're just going to click on stocks. Over here, it's going to ask you for a data selector, which is basically, hey, which stock market are you referencing? In this case, let's go with the New York Stock Exchange. Now you can see that everything is in stock format. So if we click inside it, all of the different features of that particular share will pop up. Now that we understand the transactions tab, let's hop onto the dashboard. Looking at the dashboard tab, over here we've got a table with all the financial information that we'll need for our current holdings. And just below that, we're going to have some visuals. So firstly, looking at the companies, if you go back to the transactions tab over here, the problem is that some of them are duplicated. As you can see, you've got Apple more than once. And so we need to find a formula to try account for that. So we'll use a combination of the unique, the filter, and the sum is function to filter by unique company names that have a share count greater than zero. Firstly, we'll use a unique function, so equals unique. Press the tab key, and for the array, we're gonna put the filter in there, press the tab key. This array is going to be the name of all the different companies that we've got. So all of these here, as you can see, it starts to say table one. That's because that's the name of this table over here. Press the comma key. And for include, we're going to use the sum ifs in here. Press the tab key. And the sum range, that's going to be all the different units that we've got. That's what we want to sum. Press the comma key. The criteria range is going to be that all of these here. So all of the company names. Press the comma key. And that first criteria, we're also going to take the companies close those brackets and we want those to be greater than zero, close those brackets and then close them again and hit enter. And now you can see that the formula is going to spill down all the way to the bottom. Now we've got all the five different unique ones. Then for the ticker, you're just going to go equals, select the company name. Then you want to do the number sign here, put a dot. And as you can see over here, you start to get all this list. And this is basically because it's in stock format and you can select a bunch of different things. In our case, we want the ticker. So we're just going to type ticker symbol press the tab key and hit enter. The reason I put that number sign in front is so that it spills down all across. And whenever we add a new share, say that's going to be accounted for as well. For the industry, it's the same idea. So we'll go equals, select the company. From there, we're going to press the number sign dot industry, press the tab key, hit enter. And there you go. For the quantity, we're going to need a sum if of sorts to sum the unit. So we'll go equals sum ifs, press the tab key. The sum range is going to be the units, like I mentioned. Control shift down arrow, comma. The criteria range is gonna be all the company names down there, comma, that we want them to equal to these ones over here. Close those brackets and hit enter. Now that's gonna auto populate for us as well. Then for the current price, we're just gonna select the company name and we're gonna press the number sign again, dot, and then price. Press the tab key, hit enter. For the market value, it's gonna be the price times the quantity. So we'll go equals, select the current price, press the number sign, multiply by the quantity, press the number sign again and hit enter. Then for the percentage breakdown, this is going to be the weight of that particular stock in relation to the overall portfolio. So we'll go equals, get that market value, press the number sign, and then divide that by the sum, press the tab key of all of these. Close those brackets and hit enter and that should auto populate as well. The dollar day change is going to be the price of today minus the price of the previous days. So for this, we'll go equals. We're going to select the current price, press the number sign there, and we're going to minus that by the, we'll select this one over here and then press the number sign dot. And we're going to put the previous price, previous close price there, press the tab key. And then we're going to have to multiply those. So put the multiplication there times the quantity sold. So this one over here, and then I'm just going to have to put a bracket over here at the front as well and hit enter. 
for the gain or loss, which is going to be unrealized in this case, it's the current share price or the current market value minus the market value when you bought it. So for this, we'll use a sum ifs as well. So we'll go equals. Firstly, we'll select the market value, which is the current one over here. Put the number sign and then we're going to go minus the sum ifs. Press the top key and the sum range is going to be the transaction amount, which is going to be this range over here. Press the comma key and the criteria range is going to be that the companies, so all of these over here, press the comma key, should equal these ones over here. And then hit close those brackets and hit enter. Lastly, we'll add the 52 week high and low, which is going to be quite straightforward. So it's just going to be this one and then number sign dot the 52 week high, press the top key, hit enter. And same thing over here so we'll select it number sign dot and then we'll go 52 week low hit enter nice that table with all the current holdings is going to be at the core of this model from there let's add a few summaries over here so the things like what our portfolio value is i've just gone ahead and added these three titles over here for all the summary financials and for the portfolio value it's just going to be the sum of all of the different holdings so it's going to be all of these over here and hit enter similarly for the dollar day change that's going to be the sum of all of these over here hit enter and lastly for the gain or loss we can just copy this and paste it over here press alt hoi to auto fit that and now that's looking more like it now that we have all the relevant financials let's work on some visuals for them so firstly for the portfolio breakdown let's go ahead and select uh, the, the different tickers over here so Control shift down keep pressing the Control key and here we want to select all the different percentages then we're going to go under insert we can go to recommended and the first one should be the pie chart hit ok from there we'll remove the title and let me go ahead and fast forward how i reformat this based on this pie chart over here we can start to see that amazon is a whole 40 percent of our portfolio but this isn't a very diversified portfolio. After all, the only asset class are stocks. So if you're interested in minimizing risk by diversifying away from just owning stocks, you can consider allocating a portion of your portfolio into alternative assets, which according to this JP Morgan report, they're no longer optional. So if you want to gain access to alternative asset classes, Masterworks is the platform for investing in contemporary art and also the sponsor of this video. They let you access exclusive investments from names like Banksy, Monet, and other iconic artists for just a fraction of what billionaires pay to purchase. As for how they perform, although past performance doesn't guarantee future results, contemporary art prices have outpaced the S&P 500 total return by 164% from 1995 to 2021 and have exhibited the lowest correlation to equities from nearly any major asset class. Since 2020, Masterworks has sold three paintings, with each returning over 30% net IRR to investors, and their new offerings usually sell out in hours. If you want to get in on it early, all you have to do is go to masterworks.io, create an account, check out what they have, and invest in their offerings. And if you want to skip their waitlist, go to a special link in my description. Next to the pie chart over here, it would be nice to see who the biggest gainers and losers are for us to try to see if we should sell or buy a particular stock more. So for this, we'll go ahead and select all the tickers, so Control shift down, keep pressing the Control key, and here we'll select all of the gains and losses. Then we'll go to Insert, let's go ahead and the recommended charts again, and let's go for this one, the first one seems fine, hit OK there. And let me go ahead and fast forward the reformatting. Great, based on this chart, we can really start to tell that Tesla seems to be the best performing share for us, while Amazon over here is in losses currently. Now, while we did this chart over here, we can also go ahead under the gain and loss column. So go ahead and select it, Control shift down, and we could do a conditional formatting, like a data bar, for instance. Click on that first one. As you can see, this kind of does a similar thing if you prefer it. One thing that this dashboard currently isn't telling us is the historical performance. So is Amazon just currently having a bad week and that's why it has losses? Or is it because it's been consistently a bad investment for us? For this, it'd be nice to have some sort of a trend line where you can see the historical figures. So as you can see over here, we have a bit of a setup where over here, we're gonna create a data validation. So we'll go under data, go under a data validation here, and we're gonna create a list. That list, we can source it from over here, is gonna be all the different tickers that we've got. Hit okay. There you go and now you can see hey what's going to be the performance of tesla and over here we're going to create some sort of a chart to show that same with the time periods let's say we go to data validation and we're going to create a list 
And here we're gonna put them manually. Let's say we go from one month to three months to six months and lastly 12 months and hit okay there. Now we're gonna have the drop down as well. With this formatted, we now have to actually find the historical figures. So for this, let's go to the charting tab. So control page down all the way to the bottom here. Here under the actual part, we're firstly gonna link all of them. So we'll go equals ticker. That's gonna be the um, stock over here, hit enter. And for the month, we'll go equals and just link it to the time period over here and hit enter. And for this, we're just gonna create a formula. So we'll go equals stock history press the tab key, and this is gonna give us the history of that particular stock, so the, the share price history. In this case, the stock is gonna be Tesla, press the comma key. For the start date, we're actually gonna have to go back three months, that's gonna be the start date for us based on this figure over here. So we're gonna use the edate function, press the tab key. The start date is gonna be today, press the tab key there, close those brackets, comma, and it's gonna be minus three months, so three months going backwards. So we'll put a minus sign, and then we'll put the three month sign over here, close those brackets, comma, and the end date is just gonna be today. We'll close the brackets, close the brackets again, and hit enter. As you can see over here, everything just auto-populated for us. So we've got the close price for a total of those three month period. With this information, we can go ahead and create a visual for it. So let's go ahead and select everything there, control shift down and then control shift right. We're gonna go under insert, go under recommended charts. And we're just gonna select the first, the second linear one actually, hit okay there and we're just gonna drag it all the way to the top. So press the control X, go control up arrow all the way to the top here, and let's paste it over here, control V. From there to reformat it, firstly, we're just gonna copy it and take it onto the dashboard tab. So right over here, and this is where I'm gonna reformat it. Let me fast forward that. Great, now that this is reformatted, for the title over here, we wanna make it dynamic such that it changes with the months. So we'll go equals, we're gonna click on that time period, then we're gonna go to the ampersand, quotations, press the space, and then we're gonna put month, trailing, closing prices. Close the quotations and hit enter. Now it says three months trailing closing prices. If I go ahead and change this, say we change it to six months, then that title changes and so do the financial figures. Same thing over here, if I change the stock price, say to Apple, all of the historics are gonna change for that six month period. One final feature here would be to compare stocks. So suppose we were looking to buy Amazon shares and we also considered Walmart as an investment, but we didn't. And so we wanna see which actually performed better and whether it was the right decision for us. For this, we're gonna be using the comparison over here that we've got down below. So firstly, let's go ahead and put Walmart over here. Press enter. As you can see, this is not in share price format at the moment. So we'll go under data and go under stocks. Hit enter there, that's gonna do it for us. And over here, we said we wanted to compare it to um, Amazon. Then let's go to the charting. So control page, control page down all the way to the bottom. Here, we're gonna link this one. So for the comparison to Walmart, hit enter. And for the months, we can just link it to this one over here. Then for this part over here, it's just gonna be the same. So we'll just copy it and paste it over here. As you can see, this has linked to the right one now. For the spacing issue over here, just double click up top. And that's gonna do it for us. And lastly, let's create a visual for this too. So firstly, we'll select just this date over here, as well as the price. Keep pressing the control key. And from there, we wanna select all of this time period here. So click on this first one and then control shift down arrow. Then we're gonna go under insert, go under line chart, and we're gonna do a 2D line chart from there. Press control X and then we'll take it all the way back up here. And let's just paste it down over here. Now the problem with this chart is that it's all on one axis and as you can see the share price of Amazon is actually a lot higher than the share price of Walmart. So it's not a very good comparison. Instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this blue one, right click on it and go to format data series and we're gonna put it on a secondary axis, close that and now that's gonna look a lot more like it where on the one hand you've got Amazon and on the other hand you've got Walmart and you can see the different trends here. For the series name, let's go ahead and edit that. So right click and go to select data. From there, we're gonna edit the first series one name and we're gonna link it to the Amazon actual, hit okay there. And for that second one, go under edit again. And this time we wanna select the Walmart over there, hit okay, and then hit okay again. Scroll down to see how that's looking like now. Then control C and we're gonna take that over to the dashboard tab just down below over here, control V. And let me go ahead and reformat this. I'm just gonna fast forward it. With this chart formatted, one thing to keep in mind is that Amazon shares and Walmart shares aren't all that directly comparable because they have a different number of shares outstanding. 
That being said, you can still compare the overall trend and it seems like over here, Walmart has been the better performer recently. If you ever wanna change the share you wanna compare it to, you can just go ahead and click on it and say we type Microsoft, hit enter, and just go under that question mark and it's just gonna ask you to select the right uh, market. In this case, we want the Nasdaq, that's fine for us. And now you can see the overall trend there as well. That's a stock portfolio tracker. If you ever want to refresh the data, you can go under data and refresh all. That's going to refresh the share price, etc. For more on Excel, check out this link over here to create an interactive dashboard or this other link over here to learn more about finance and valuation. Hit that like, hit that subscribe if you liked it and I'll catch you in the next one.